Hello, Carmel Valley Summer Symphony. I am Christian Garcia, a cellist in Las Vegas, Nevada. I teach at the Nevada School of the Arts, where I teach lessons, work with our chamber orchestra and chamber music programs. I also teach in our Suzuki Talent Education Program. I'm super excited to share this video with you and impart some knowledge, which I hope will help up your game in learning music. Beethoven and Fran, a methodical approach to learning passages. Fran is a method, and Beethoven is the vehicle which we will use to explore this method. I learned Fran from one of my mentors, uh, Tanya Carey, and it has changed my approach to learning music and how I teach. The piece of music you see here is the opening of the second movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. This excerpt is a standard audition excerpt. If you are not familiar with the piece, it opens with only the cellos and violas performing this lovely kind of lilting melody with a light bass line below. As with any new piece of music, you want to listen to as many good recordings as possible to familiarize yourself with it. FRAN is an acronym which we will discover as we will go along. Each letter focuses on a different layer of the music we are working on. F is for fingerings. In this step, we're not only going to focus on fingerings, but on how we shift and our pitch. I have included a rhythmless version of our piece so we can focus on the pitch and fingerings. In this video, I am playing the pitches slowly with a drone to help center my intonation. R is for rhythm. By clapping, counting, and tapping, and even singing, we can further enhance our understanding of the passage and strengthen our rhythmic skills. 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 1E and a 2E One ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta, three ta te ta, one ta te ta, two ta te ta. 
ta three ta 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 one ta 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 two ta 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 three ta 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 one ta 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 two ta 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 three ta 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 one ta ta ta. When we move our bow back and forth, we create rhythm. When we place our fingers down and change pitch, we also create rhythm. Sometimes the bow and our fingers are playing the same rhythm, and sometimes when we have slurred notes, our fingers and our bow are playing different rhythms. In the first example, we examined the rhythm in our left hand. Now let's explore our bow rhythm. If we take away the left hand and string crossings, we get this. Let's simplify it visually. The rhythm of our bow is much less complex than that of our left hand. As an added exercise, here is the left hand rhythm being tapped and the bow rhythm being played together. A is for articulation. Articulation is everything your bow is responsible for. This includes dots, lines, other symbols, bowings, and dynamics. In the following examples, you'll notice there is one on one pitch, and there is one with the correct pitches added back in. The reason for this is Articulations are all about the bow, so let's work on the bow as much as we can without the left hand. The most important articulation in this first example is the staccato, or the dot, above the eighth note at the beginning of the first full measure. There are no other dots in this particular excerpt. It is indicating to us to give space between the two C's. I start with that eighth note to make sure I am giving the right kind of space required for this articulation. When I am certain I am getting the articulation I want, I move on. If you can sing it, you can play it. I sang along while I played to make sure the sound idea I had in my head was the same as what my bow was producing. In these next two examples, the focus will be on our dynamics. We have piano to forte to piano. This forte is meant to be a warm swell of sound and not aggressive or harsh. The first of these two examples I chose to demonstrate on an A flat since this example will actually be on the D string. When I am certain I am creating the dynamics and the sound I want, I move on.
Notice that these two examples have identical rhythms and dynamics, and aside from different pitches, the only other difference is the slur connecting the dotted quarter and the eighth note. This changes my bow distribution and how I create the dynamics. N is for notes. The final step is putting it all back together. Notes are made of pitch, rhythm, and articulations. If we have worked on all three separately and diligently, we can put them back together with a deeper understanding and higher level of ability. Thank you again for watching this video, Beethoven and Fran, a methodical approach to learning passages. Thank you to Beethoven for this wonderful piece of music that we use today. Thank you to Tanya Carey, my cello teaching mentor, for sharing this method with me so that I can share it with all of you. And thank you to the Carmel Valley Summer Symphony for asking me to create this video for you guys. It was a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the method or on anything cello, please feel free to contact me. I hope you have a great summer and I hope you have a great school year. Bye.